Hi and welcome to another Memories Made video. I'm designer Jen Gallagher and this week I'm going to talk about the way that I was inspired to create this layout. Now I love flea market shopping, antique shopping, and someone showed me or rather sent me these awesome gas station letters and they're for signage whether for an old movie or a gas station I'm not sure but I loved them and I have them displayed in different places throughout my home. Now apparently other companies are inspired the same way I am and these are similar concept from Crate Paper and they are clear letters that are reminiscent of the gas station or signage letters and it's from the Pure Collection again from Crate Paper. And so I wanted to use a vintage look on my layout to match the vintage signs that I have. So we're gonna go ahead and use these pure letters to create the title for the layout I'm going to make today. So I'm going to be using several different manufacturers, but I'm using a lot of some new basic gray papers, as well as this particular pattern paper from Webster's Pages. And this is what it looks like on the other side. This is the basic gray other side, lots of fun tickets. It's a travel collection. And then I'm also going to be using some mini album pieces, and this is from basic gray as well. And I loved the arrow cut out. So let's go ahead and attach this to our layout. And it's just gonna peek out a little bit on the layout. Just so you can see these arrow pieces. And then I'm going to add this yellow dot on top as well and then I'm going to add some tan photo corners to each corner and these are from Canson and before I finish putting that down I have pre-punched with this particular EK Success border punch a white border punch and I'm going to ink the edges just to make it a little more creamy rather than a stark white because the elements from this basic gray collection are a stark white. And then I will crinkle it up a little bit to distress it. You've seen me do this lots of times. If you have a border punch that you like, this is a great place to insert it. And we're going to attach it right underneath this yellow pattern paper just to overlap it a little bit. So let's go ahead and finish putting the photo corners onto the layout. These are self-adhesive. You could also punch or die cut these as well. Also from the Pure Collection, I have some Polaroid frames. And I'm going to use these to frame my photos to add some photos to them and this particular layout is about a flight that my husband and I took to Hawaii and how long it was but how fun it was to arrive in Hawaii. We can attach these with some glue dots. And these particular frames come in several different sizes as well as colors. So if your option, you have a lot of options for what particular style or color you want to use. You could also die cut frames or look for other companies that make frames to frame your photos. Then to this upper frame, I'm going to add a die cut tab from October Afternoon. This is also from their travel collection. And you can see that I have combined several collections to add a travel theme element to the layout. I'm also going to use from the Forest and Fern collection by Little Yellow Bicycle some little stars. These are shiny chipboard stars. And we'll just use glue dots to adhere them. Then to the bottom of this frame, I wanted to hang some tags. And they are wooden tags as well as chipboard tags. And they're from a different basic gray collection. And you'll see that some have printed words and some have a cut in them, a laser cut. But I wanted to show you how you can alter them. If you take any wood veneer element, you can use any kind of ink. This is a great one, this is a chalk ink and you simply rub it across the top. 
This particular chalk ink is from Prima. And you can see how quickly I've altered the color. And I actually already did that with a slightly longer wooden pennant just to add in some different colors. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add some double-sided sticky tape to the bottom of this frame so that I can add, you can see that I've pre-tied these with twine to make this video go a little faster. I'm simply going to add some double-sided sticky tape to the bottom of this frame. And this will eventually be covered up. But you'll see I'll be able to attach the twine to it. You could also tie the twine to the bottom of the frame before you attach it to your layout. So however you want to do it is fine. And to help hold my pieces in place, I'm going to place a glue dot behind each wooden pennant so that it stays in place. And then I have a orange cardstock one, or rather chipboard, and that is also from the Forest and Fern. You can see that I'm just slowly layering these. This particular one has two circles in it. Let me get this over just a little bit to get exactly where I want it. Those glue dots like to stick, which is nice. And they can come as far down as you want and then simply attach the twine at the top to that double-sided sticky tape. So basically I'm creating a fun visual triangle by overlapping those wooden pennants. If you don't have these wooden pennants, you could simply use any other kind of pennant shape, whether it is a die cut or another sticker or you could add any other element overlap that you wish. So again stick those down and then I'm going to cover up the twine with some fun corrugated cardboard shapes and I'm going to use that same stamping ink and I'm just going to drag it across the edge of these clouds to darken them up a little bit. These particular chalk ink applicators come in several different colors and they have a rich tone to them and they come in greens and pinks and reds and whites and a lot of different colors. And we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more glue dots to them so that they will stick on top of that double sided sticky tape and make sure you don't cover up the photo. So you can see I've added a little bit of a cloud theme to the bottom there, and those are the overlapped wooden elements. Then for the journaling portion of the layout, I am using a file folder from Basic Gray, and I printed my journaling right on top of the card insert that actually comes with this particular pocket. But to dress it up a little bit, I'm going to add some stamping, and this particular word says blessing. And I'm going to be using some crumb cake ink from Stampin' Up! And I'll be sure to link you to some other options. This is a great ink. It's a nice kind of craft colored ink. And we are just going to stamp that right over the top of the title, or rather the journaling, so that it shows up in the pocket. So you can see how it looks stamped. And then you just insert it in your pocket. And you can see that you can see a portion of the journaling, but not all of it, but the stamp title and cursive draws attention to it. To the side of the pocket, before sticking it down, I'm going to use an exclusive paper clip from Two Peas, and it is an arrow shape. They do come in several different colors, and it's just a fun element, and it adds kind of a metallic look to the pocket. I'm also going to add an additional tab. This is from the October Afternoon Collection, the Travel Collection, and I'll be sure and link that to you on my blog so that you can see all the different elements I've used. And then I wanted to create kind of a cluster down here. So from a different collection from Basic Gray, I'm going to be using this file folder pocket, and I'm just going to slightly overlap it. Now this one isn't closed, and so, so that it stays closed, I'm going to add some adhesive to the center of it. 
Then I have a die cut shape from a basic gray collection and it's just a number two. And to give it some height, I'm gonna add some adhesive foam squares to the back of it. And I'm gonna slightly overlap that ampersand. So just creating just a little cluster here. Then from the travel collection by Basic Gray, there was this cool little tab that kind of reminded me of a flight ticket. Remember the vintage tickets when we actually had printed tickets? Just reminded me of that. So we're gonna hang this off the side and then I wanted to add a brad to the center of it. So I placed the foam beneath and I'm going to use a paper piercer to create a hole large enough for a brad. And this is just a blue brad from Echo Park Paper. You can use whatever brad you want, or you could use a button for this part of the layout. Now let's go back to our inspiration piece. And it was these fun vintage sign letters. And I'm going to use the word fly. And so I pulled these particular letters from the crate paper collection of signs, and they're completely clear. And I've talked about it before, but when you're dealing with clear items, you need to determine where the adhesive is going to go. And if I put the adhesive here, you would see it. So I'm going to put it beneath the Y. You could also staple these to your layout and they would work just as well. And you can just make sure wherever the adhesive is, it just isn't in your face. You don't want it to, the eye to be drawn to the adhesive. You want it to be drawn to the actual clear pieces. So first I adhered them with a glue dot. Now I'm going to use a stapler to hold them in place and they are fairly thin. And we'll just staple the tops. That also brings in the metal of the brad and the metal of the paper clip to the page up at the top corner. I like to try and repeat an element three different times to make sure that it flows on my layout. Let's try that again. So there you can see I've combined different travel elements to create a layout that is based on our flight and trip to Hawaii. You can see how I've changed the color of wood veneer shapes as well as used my inspiration piece to create the title. Thank you for joining me for today's Memories Made video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on this weekly video series.